What's up, Unity developers? It's James. Okay, so we've got a request from a viewer, and he wants to know about a level system. So, what we're going to do is build some levels. Now, as you can see in my assets section, I've right clicked and created a folder and named it Scenes. So, I'm going to save the scenes of my game, or the levels basically, inside this folder. So, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and save this scene in my scenes folder right here and save it as tutorial scene one and yes I want to replace it okay so now we've got this scene so what we need to do is have another level that we can jump to when this one when we reach the end of this one okay so to do that we're gonna to want to take a lot of this stuff with us so we've created a prefabs folder and I've got copies of the floor object the platform object the player object. Let's create a few more prefabs. So I'm going to right click and create a prefab and I'm going to name this one checkpoint. Okay. And so I can grab my checkpoint object and drag it over in here and it will create a prefab for me. That's my checkpoint object. Another way to create prefabs with Unity 4, uh, I'm not sure if it works in Unity 3, but I know in Unity 4 it works. What you can do is actually grab an object from your hierarchy panel and just drag it right over into the prefabs folder and it will create a prefab for you. Okay, and this one should have the mesh renderer turned off, but it's showing up in this window for some reason. I don't know why. Um, other things we want to have prefabs are um, let's create a prefab of the crate. Let's just drag one of those over there just so it looks good. Um, we need a prefab for the spawn point so we can drag one of those over put that in the scene um, what else do we need uh, we might need a barrier anything else we might need a death zone we're probably gonna need one of those in the next level okay um, the environment backdrop we can create a new one but we don't necessarily have to have one um, I think that's good. Let's go ahead. And now that we've got our scene saved, we can go to File and New. Uh, where is it? New Scene. Right here at the top. File New Scene or Control N. It'll ask you if you want to save. Um, just press Save. So we save level one. This is a brand new scene. Okay. So what we're gonna do is build a scene just like we did the very first video of this tutorial. We're going to start out by creating a background if we want to. I'm going to go without one on this level. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, let's go without one just so we can tell them apart. One will have a background, one won't. Uh, let's go ahead and add in some floors and a barrier and just put that anywhere on the map we like. Um, we're going to put in one spawn point for our player. Okay. Um, and then let's add in another barrier so we can just control duplicate this one control D just throw that barrier in there and move this one over so it lines up on the edge there um, let's go ahead and add in another floor as a ceiling for the player and we're gonna go ahead and oop, and move these back a little bit on the Z axes so they show up behind the barriers okay so that's looking pretty good right there um, what else do we need in our level we need a player when we first start so let's go ahead and drop one of those in there and um, let's put in some platforms Let's make a vertical moving one over here in the corner. We're going to set the position of that on the Z to 0. We can set the player's position on the Z to 0. We want the main camera Z position to be negative 10. That's fine. Uh, we're going to switch the camera settings to orthographic size 10. Okay. Um, this platform we're going to move vertically. And you can set your level up however you want. Um, I'm going to make it move vertically 10 with a step of 0 0.02. Okay, so we can move that down because it's going to go up 10 units. 
Let's go ahead and actually move this up out of the scene there. Uh, let's create another platform from our prefabs here, one that's near the player. And we can reset the Z of that to zero. You can see it shows up. Um, and then we can go ahead and set this one to a, you know, we'll just leave it static where it sits, okay? You can't really see the floor right now because it's outside of the main camera. Actually, I think it's, yeah, the camera's set. Oh, the background is way far off. Okay, so let's just uh, click on this stuff and control, hold down control and click on these things and then move them back until they show up in the camera and we get our sandwich right. Okay, that looks pretty good for me. Let's go ahead and set that up like so. Make sure this platform is at zero and the player object should be at zero and the spawn point needs to be at zero on the Z. So we're setting up our game here. We're putting in all kinds of stuff. Let's go ahead and um, add in an, an enemy just right here and set the Z on that to zero again. Okay, now you'll notice there's something about this scene that's different from the other scene. One, it's a lot darker. Okay, now the reason for this is because in scene one we had a directional light. There's two ways you can do this in a 2D platform tutorial. You can set up a directional light like we have in scene one, or you can go into edit, render settings, and change this ambient light to a flat white. And that will make sure that everything is just as bright as if it was getting hit by direct sunlight all the time. Okay, so we've got an enemy in there and we've got this and all that stuff. Um, is there anything else we should add in? Maybe some crates if we want to. Um, this level really isn't big enough to have checkpoints. <laughs> Uh, let's see, I want to put it right up on top of this platform and set it also to, uh, let's go with two, so it doesn't run into our player, okay? So we've got a crate and some other stuff and, um, and no background, but the shadow effect still looks pretty cool. So we can go to file and save this scene in the scenes folder, and we're actually going to name it tutorial scene number two. Okay, and then save. Okay, so now we've got one scene saved, and if we go to our scenes folder, we have the other scene, which if I load is the one we've been working on through the entire series. So now what we need to do is have a way to jump from one scene to the next.